An online card store sold me a box of cards that was resealed, and I didn't even realize it. Here's the story. It's 2017 and I just came back to my favorite card game which was MTG at the time. However, trust me, the premise is the same for Pokemon products and pretty much any other ones. If you stay long enough, I'll show you how not to get host like I did. I bought an ETB-like box, you know, a bunch of boosters and a nice colorful box for roughly $50. All jilly jolly I got to the opening and soon realized that, you know, I've torn through all the boosters without even pulling anything remotely valuable. Which is an odd situation, given that all these products have a guaranteed super rare, and I also noticed a yellow weird layer of glue on the seals of the booster themselves. So anyway, time passed, I moved on to all the adult stuff, you know, food, relationships and slaving away to my 9 to 5 to buy more cards, and only after a few months, after basically watching another YouTuber's video on resealed boxes, I realized, well, I've been duped. Not gonna lie, I felt pretty pissed. But over time, as I got hooked into collecting cards and amassed almost $10,000 worth of vintage cards, you know, I got pretty good at spotting resealed products and counterfeit Chinese cards and whatnot. So I'm here to share some of that knowledge with you. Here's how to spot the most common resealing tactics, and I'll be moving over to a live recording now. Two ways someone will try to reseal your Pokemon box or any other box for that matter. The one most common on boxes with logos on them, like this one, would be that someone cuts open the box in a place that is not necessarily very visible, like the bottom or the back. You don't necessarily check the bottom of the box before, you know, opening it. And then once they take out whatever they want to take out from the boosters, they just heat back the foil and then it looks... This one is, this, this one is not resealed, so I don't have a resealed one, but they would heat up the foil, stitch it back together, and it would leave like a clamp zone of like melted foil. You cannot really avoid that. And this is the most common on seals like this. So oftentimes they would also additionally make another, say, um, damage to the seal. Like for example here, I did it by accident when opening the, uh, the package back in the day. They would say slice it in a place that okay uh, indicates damage to the seal, but you know this is in no way damaging to the integrity of the box. So they would divert your direct your attention to a place that you're not supposed to be looking at. You know what I mean? The second type of seal that could be trying to dupe to dupe you is the one without logos, which is, in my opinion, easier to spot because. Uh, they oftentimes get a little bit more sloppy with what they're doing. So I'm, not, I'm gonna try to make a sound of the box. Not sure if you can hear it, but the foil in its original state or the way it comes out of the factory has a certain feeling to it. It's more rubbery, it's very elastic, it's flexible. And oftentimes when someone takes off the original seal and tries to reseal the thing with, say, just a plastic wrapper or some of some sort, it would feel more, well, plasticky or like rigid. It wouldn't have this flexibility. You can't go like this with it, really. You, can you see it on camera very nicely? Yeah, see, you, you usually wouldn't be able to do something like this with it without leaving some sort of permanent cramp on it. So that's that. Alright, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. If you did, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, share it with your friends so nobody gets duped. Bye! -o.